Two Mega Pops is an achievement in Balloons Tower Defense 6, where a single tower needs to accumulate 2 million pops between round 6 to 100, in which Chimps mode is well on for its essentials. So, in order to do this, we're going to be placing down in this video a tack shooter and growing it all the way to the tack zone. So let's get started on this wonderful journey. Hopefully we'll place Geraldo down and save this round, round eight, and then round nine comes and Geraldo's level two. Hopefully we'll be able to provide the tack shooter at this point in time, some early camera detection without requiring a radar scanner in place, although we will get one eventually. We're going to go top path paired with the tag zone simply because I prefer the extra attack rate over the attack range because we'll be getting plenty of range buffs with the combination of the primary mentoring and the alchemist and alongside well, nothing else actually really. I suppose the invisibility oh, potion when it goes white rather than green. We'll be buffing the tag zone when it gets to that point with an alchemist. And with the alchemist, we'll be able to pop down the acidic mixture to dip and the strongest stimulant. And then eventually the perma brewster that is able to pop lead balloons. Although we still will be getting the MIB to ensure a guaranteed amount of lead popping potential because we want it to be able to pop DDTs at some point. But with the tag zone and not the top uh, path, we will not be able to be able to pop lead balloons. I know I kind of just mix, messed up my dialogue there. Equipping the tag sprayer, then eventually we'll be getting the overdrive. Despite being a tier 5 tower that's been given recent nerfs, it's still a very formidable tower in its own rights when you equip it with buffs. And speaking of buffs, we're going to be equipping the invisibility potion so that it's able to target those pesky camo balloons. Next camos will be on round 34. We'll be going Berserker Brew before Overdrive because I feel like we're going to need that increase in popping potential sooner rather than later. Since it's got a very fast attack rate, that means it is, its acidic mixture dip will run out very quickly if our balloon's always within its attack radius. Strongest Stimulant is slightly cheaper than Overdrive, but I feel like Overdrive is going to be more beneficial early on than getting the Strongest Stimulant. Oh, it's round 33 in which we get the next camo. It's okie dokie, my bad. I, I said round 34, didn't I? I was speaking of threes and stuff like that. At this point in time of the recording, we just hit 3,000 subscribers and I am eternally grateful for each and every single one of you and your support that you've given me. For other recent weeks, days, months, I know that's a reverse order, but... That's, that's what we're going with anyway. So thank you all so much for all of your support. Hopefully we will continue growing. Another invisibility potion for round 36. I did not grab the worn hero's cape. That will provide no benefits for this journey. Strongest stimulant. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is where we're going to need that acidic mixture dip. Always please... Uh, Alchemist. Yeah, we're gonna go with a 420 and then we're gonna go with a two no 130 in order to ensure this can always pop lead balloons. Because this only provides temporary lead popping potential, but an MIB will ensure that it can permanently pop lead balloons. Although a perma brew will ensure that it can always do that, but I feel like throughout these rounds in order for us to get to perma brew we're gonna need the mib we're now 320 once we get 2700 then we're gonna get to the primary mentoring where the increased range will be intact there we go so what's gonna be next i feel like it's either gonna be an mib or it's gonna be a overclock because 21,600 is very cheap for a tier 5 tower but I feel like we're going to need to extend the attack rate of this before we can actually delve into the tier 5 upgrade itself. Gosh, that took a while for the acidic mixture dip to, to kick in there. Yeah, ceramics go down really easily. 
The uh, primary uh, benefits that the top path of the Monkey Village provides is an absolute blessing to all of the primary towers. I like how the foam appears below the box of fireworks. That's a really neat addition that you added in there, Ninja Kiwi. Thank you. <laughs> I love that it appears beneath the boxes. Okay, please. Otherwise, the alchemist will deal with the lads. Thank you very much. That's why I'm wanting the MIB soon. So that we'll be able to circumvent our lead problem. Let's see. Overclock is in place. And with that... We are near unstoppable. Although this will mean the acidic mixture div and strongest stimulant will run out even sooner. Because I think with the strongest stimulant, it's it varies on either two things. Number one, it's either the amount of attacks that you project outwards, so that's your attack rate and not the amount of projectiles that you fire out per attack. Or it depends on time itself, whereas Regardless of the amount of time, the acidic mixture dip will not disappear unless it fires a certain amount of projectiles based on its attack rate. So let's say it with the attack was with the overdrive, it fires out so many spikes, but it's not depending on per projectile, but the amount of times that it fires outwards. Yeah, the overclock paired with the overdrive is the right decision at the moment. These mobs are not going anywhere at the moment. And this, by the way, is a very cheap tower. Don't underestimate primary towers at all. So I think we should go for the MIB now. Let's see. Yeah, we can afford it. So we have permanently solved our lead issue. Yeah, there we go. The MIB is really beneficial. Like, once we get Permabrew, then you'll be like, well, why did you buy the MIB? Well, it's in order to actually get the Permabrew. That's the issue. It's never the actual tower that's the issue. Like I've said in other videos, it's getting to that point that can be the issue. It's the journey, not just the destination. Round 63, these camos are only a slight issue. They're making it pass just a little bit, but once they get round the medium square, then they are no issue whatsoever. Oh, oh gosh, okay. I thought they were about to get away there. Yep. Overclock paired with the two mon oh, sorry, the monkey villages there and the alchemist, and we are good. They did not escape to the big rectangle or the big square. Whichever works best for you. Yeah, that attack rate is just superb. We are mincing through these ceramics. And through these Moabs. And soon these BFBs, then Moabs, then ceramics, then gone. I can't really think of a scenario where the longer range will be more beneficial than the more attack rate. I would say aside from being able to fit in certain circles where you would need the initial additional range in order to be able to actually attack balloons in the first place. But aside from that, I always go with the even faster shooting than the longer range. Round 69 and this overdrive is still holding strong, I'm not gonna lie. Like, just relying on this one tower has been a blessing so far. We've had no struggles whatsoever. Okay, this pierce might start to become an issue, but we have the money for the tax, so no, and it's just going absolutely haywire. I think with the money that we have left over within this game, we'll be able to get a permabrew, and then we'll be able to get a second overclock. And then from there, we'll get stuff like a Relentless Glue or a Ninja Sabo. And then we'll go from there and see what else we can put down on the field. Welcome to the Death Zone. Your population will become nil. We could go Expertise, but then that starts stealing pots with this Ballista attack, which is not what we want. I wonder if there's ever been a two mega pots with primary expertise, but then again, that would be extremely expensive in order to get to in the first place. Like, wouldn't you be stealing too many pots in order to actually get to that point in the first place? Like, this is already at 226,000, and I think we've only just got to the 27,000 mark anyways. Come on then, BFB. Come on then, Ceramics. You have no chance against my tag zone. 79 is here. Regrow rainbows. You'll have zero chance of regrowing back. 
Oh, once the alchemist applies, oh, ho, 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 that permanent pierce increase is going to be wonderful. Because at the moment, we're kind of struggling with pierce because each of these little spikes, icicle spikes, they've only got a certain amount of pierce on them and they are actually run out. So we need to fully utilize the sphere that we have on our attack radius in order to be able to fully utilize its pop potential. But actually, in hindsight, I should have deployed it so this down here so that it kind of is able to reach all of its square. But then again, because of how the tax the, the tag shooter works, it means that there's a slight elevation of its attack in order to actually splay out its spike. So placing it as close to the track as possible from the bottom side is actually more beneficial than trying to put it on the top side of the road because then only the bottom stuff is able to attack the balloons rather than the sides and the top. I'm not gonna lie, because of how short range the attack shooters are at any given point in time, each round feels much longer than other tier 5 towers do. And with the Inferno Ring, because it shoots out fireballs every once in a while, the rounds don't actually feel as long as, let's say, with this. I don't think Super Maelstrom is possible because its power is reliant upon its ability and even though it recharges very quickly you actually have to get to that point anyways with the super maelstrom in order to buy it but it just does not have that popping potential like other towers do oh these ceramics are chewing through our spires spires spears here icicle spears icicle spikes I was just making random nonsense, but what the hell? This is a two mega pops challenge, and we are here for the long run. Hopefully, we've got enough popping potential here in order to deal with all this. This is only at 3,500. This is at 500,000. We are not even hit the halfway marker when it comes to the overall amount of pops. I'm not even been using Jerry's Hot Fire, but we'll deploy that on round 91 in order to utilize its full potential so that we don't have to deploy another one down. <laughs> yes, eh? Hey, we could enhance our experience by making our time a little bit easier by putting down Jerry's fire on it, but we're not going to do that at the moment. Yeah, this thing has a particular weakness to fortified balloons, so we're going to have to really watch out for that. But once we get permabrew, then we'll be able to circumvent some of our issues with fortified balloons. Four zero MGs are inbound, but we are going to be having ourselves a mighty feast with watermelons and fishes. Oh, hello, Rainbow. But alas, you have been popped. So we're going to need that permabrew post haste. But these are weaker than the zero MGs. We're going to need to constantly apply that overclock when we get it. So timing is going to be key. Especially when it comes to like DDTs and all that lot. Ooh, these fortified mobs could be an issue. Yeah, let's use the overclock. We're going to really need it for this particular part of the scenario. And then there's these as well. This is going to run out. Ooh. This might be a struggle. This could be a struggle. Yeah, I'm thinking we might need to deploy. Oh, um, is this going to be okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I was a little bit worried there, but we're fine. So now, there we go. Neutralized the DDT threat. You see, fortified balloons. They are getting somewhere on the track. And unless we're able to circumvent that once we get to 64,800, then the later rounds are going to be a huge, huge struggle. Yeah, I'm going to restart that and apply some Jerry's Fire. And while we're at it, we're going to apply some Invisibility Potion. It's mainly just to increase its range. That's all it is for. So hopefully we'll be able to do this even better now that we have Jerry's Fire as some additional popping potential. And we're able to deal with this somewhat well. Let's see. This is still a bit of a struggle, though. Not going to lie. We're going to need some Sabo, possibly? Let's see. This round is adjourned, but I'm still not liking where we are at this point in time. Round 92. Yeah, fortifies are a struggle for the tag zone. So yeah, the nerves have really hit it hard in a way, but we've got permabrew now. 
Apply your perma brewness to the attack zone, please. We're going to really need it. There we go. Now the fortified balloons are going to taste some real pain more quickly. Round 93. More DET. So where are we going to go from here? I think a second overclock is going to be very handy for us. And possibly a, a balloon sabo if we're able to have the money for it. Okay, apply the overclock, please. Round 94 is here. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're very good in this. Round 94. Ooh, that's going well. Let's use the overclock. I think we've got time before round 95 when the DET spawn up. Because they take a while to spawn out in round 95. Let's see. Purple balloons, lead balloons, not a problem whatsoever. Uh, come on, overclock. I know you can do it. There we go. Now apply the overclock. When the DDTs and fortifies are... Yeah, now fortifies are not a big of an issue because of the fact that the, uh, the strongest stimulant is now permanent on the tag zone. Which is definitely helpful. The fortified balloons are not making it as far now. Let's see. Let's put this down over here. Yeah, these are barely going to steal any pops. Let's see. Put that down there. Now, how are we doing time-wise? Oh, they're actually pretty spaced out, actually. But that's really good. That's really good. Space them out. So that... Oh, it's near the halfway point. That's perfect. Do it 50% so you always know that it's applied to a tier 5 power. So what are we going to do with the rest of our money? So I'm thinking of a... Balloon Sabo. Just to slow them down. Come on, ZMGs, you take forever to get here. Although in some cases that can be a blessing. Like, having zero Gs is pros and cons. Slow because, well, it enables you to recharge your abilities, but cons, well, some things just run out like a graveyard. Let's see, apply the overclock again. Let's see, I'm going to apply the... Creepy idols here and here. Round night and night. Oh, let's see. Come on, tag zone. Keep up with all this, please. Oh, this might be bad. This might be. Are we okay in this? No, we're not. We're gonna need some help. Wait a minute, sharpening stone. We've never even applied this. That could actually help us out if we actually fall ahead on that. <laughs> If I just thought ahead on that, maybe that would have... Oh, wait. Jar of pickles as well. So now we are... Now we're actually doing this proper now. Okay, so 800. We'll spend it so we can get the remaining two creepy idols down. And then we can actually do this. Actually, I should have done that after. So we can put these two glues down. And no worries. I think we're in the clearing now. Like... The sharpening stone would have been great for pierce and damage, and the jar of pickles good for these fortified annoyances. Okay, how are we doing this time around now? Are we doing better? Are we doing better? This doesn't look... Oh, yeah, that's much better. The creepy idol is actually sending them back, which is lovely. Okay, there's a little bit of a struggle there, but we're there now. We're there now. What is that? That is doom for the balloons. Yeah, there was a bit of a worry there. I was thinking, what else could I do? Thinking, well, in all this time, naturally, the attack zone would never be able to pop lead balloons or frozen balloons. So, we should have applied for sharpening stone much earlier on. But here we are with this. So, what can we do with the remainder of our money? Uh, let's see now. Let's put down a... We'll do that. And over here, we'll apply a snowstorm with cold snap. I don't even know why I did that. I'm not going to lie. So apply that. We'll be able to get there. There we go. And with that slowed down. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to need. And that's it. Yep. Easy as that. And also quite a nice insta because of the fact we're on a beginner map. Let's see, 2,036,000 pops. A few hit and misses there when it comes to this scenario, but we managed to do it. We managed to get this through 
and uh, deliver the 2 million pops that it deserves. Despite the recent nerfs, you can still do a 2 million pops with the tax zone if you give it the right support. So there's a primary mentoring, the MIB, the permabrew, the overclocks, and just for that little bit of spiciness at the end, the snowstorm and the sabo, in order to slow down the balloons, just giving that little bit more support. And these creepy idols, always place the two creepy idols down around 97 or around 98, just before Gerardo hits level 20, so that when he gets around 100, you will have four creepy idols on the field when you face the bad, which is very helpful. Thank you all so much for watching, and let me know what two mega pots you would like to see me do next. I'm thinking of a Comanche Commander or an Apache Prime scenario. So let me know which scenario or which tower you'd like me to see me do down in the comment section below. I'm going to do it on logs because we need the track lane. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everyone.